Hi, welcome to Mr. Stewart's Lessons. Today what we're going to do is add randomly moving actors to our world. In this case, the actors are going to be flies that we're going to try and catch with the fish, um, but you could also add them as opponents that could try and catch you. Um, the world we have here is one I created in my extra lesson, which is a fish that moves towards the mouse when I click. If you haven't done that lesson and you want to do it, you can go to MrStewart'sLessons.com and you can go down to Lesson 15 and download the demo for this. So if you need it, go get that right now. Okay, so hopefully you've got this open and compiled and running. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an actor and the actor here is going to be a fly. So I'm going to add a new subclass. Um, I'm going to look for fly. Of course you could pick whichever animal you want, doesn't really matter. So I've got a fly here. I will call it fly with a capital F. Okay, we always should call our class names a capital letter. And I'll click OK. So now we want to add a bunch of flies. Now the simple way to do this would be to just uh, just uh, click on here and hold down shift key and add flies and then save the world. Um, but, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that in a more sophisticated way now. I'm going to show you how to do something new called an array variable. Uh, and th this will make it so we can decide how many flies we want to add at any point. We can add more or less. And so I'm going to go into my world down here is the prepare method. The prepare method is what sets it up and adds any actors that we want to add in at the beginning of the game. You can see I'm already adding in the fish sort of at the middle of the screen. What I want to do now, I want to add a bunch of flies and I want to add them in random places. Um, the easiest or the best way to do this is to instead of adding a bunch of different variables for flies we're going to add one variable that represents all the flies and to make one variable that represents a bunch of things we have to make an array variable and so an array variable is does something uh, makes one variable that can represent a bunch of objects or strings or numbers or anything like this and here's how we create an array variable we start with uh, whatever the class of it is um, it, or the type of variable. The type of variable uh, could be integer or string. In this case it's fly. And then we're going to put open and close square brackets. Those are not curly brackets. Watch out. Those are the things right below the curly brackets actually on the same key but right below it. And then I'm going to give, so th this here tells me we've got an array variable coming up. Then I'm going to give it a uh, name and I'm going to call it flies. So that's just the name of the variable. That could be anything, of course, but we should give it a name that makes sense of what it is. And then I'm going to say new fly. This is, again, the class of the variable, or the type of the variable, I should say. And then inside here, I'm going to write how many I want to have. Um, if you've worked with other programming languages, you might be used to array variables that can get bigger or smaller, but that's not the case here. This is, uh, got, there's only going to be five flies. But every time I, uh, run the program I could uh, go back and I could change it so if I decided I wanted seven flies and in the program and I want I, I can rewrite the program and just put a seven here instead of a five so what I want to do is I want to go and I want to make so what I've got here is I've got a variable with five different things in it um, um, so five different parts so to speak and so what I want to is to go through each of these parts and make it into a new fly. Okay, so we haven't actually made the flies yet. We've just sort of made five places where a fly can go. So I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a for statement. A for statement is something that allows you to go through one thing at a time. Okay, so I'm going to do for, and then I'm going to. So we have to put when we do a for statement. First, we put where we're going to start. So I'm going to create an integer variable named i. It's just sort of what people always do with a, um, a standard uh, uh, f for statement. They usually use i or j or something, but it could be anything. Okay, so I'm going to create and I'm going to say that is equal to zero. That's where we start counting. Then I'm going to write i is less than flies dot length. Um, so flies dot length, right, there's uh, five 
things in it, right? So the length of the fly's array is five. So this means it's going to count up to one less than five. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four. Because if there's five things in the flies, then the highest thing is going to be four because programmers always start counting at zero. And then I'm going to want i to increase every time. So I'm going to write i plus plus and close my parentheses. So this is a little confusing, but just what we're doing is we're starting at zero. We're going up to the highest, uh, the highest number of the flies, which is four, one less than five, and we're doing it one step at a time, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my, put open, close curly bracket. So inside here is what's going to be in the for statement. And um, so what I'm going to do, first I'm going to say flies, and then flies i equals new fly. So it's going to so say we're on flies say we're on flies part zero then that part zero is going to become a new fly then when it goes through again part one is going to become a new fly part two is going to become a new fly we're going to end up adding five flies um, so what we're going to do now um, is we're going to uh, we need to figure out where we're going to put the flies. We want it to be a random place. We want to put the flies in at a sort of random place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, an integer variable. And so I'm going to call this uh, fly x. It's going to be the x coordinate of where this fly is going to start. Okay. So we've done this before. We're going to get a random coordinate on here. So I'm going to say green foot. We're going to use the get random number feature, which we've used before. Um, the get random number is, uh, and now the question is out of what, right? Well, what we want it to do is anywhere across the whole width of this thing, right? So the X could be anywhere from over here to all the way over there. So we want a random number that's up to the width of the water world. Well, there's luckily there's a easy way to do that and so what I'm gonna do is I can say um, I can use the method get width which is the width of the water world and so this is going to generate in this case the width of this we know is uh, 600 because that was assigned up here so we're going to um, get a random number from 1 to 600 I could have just written 600 in here instead but the nice thing here, what if I go back and decide to change my world and I decide to make it 500 wide or 1,000? Then I would have to go down here and change the code. Now I don't have to do that. Now I'm going to do another. We want to get the y variable. So I'm going to go get an integer variable called fly y. Right? And this is green foot. And again, we're going to do the get random number. And this is going to be, since the y represents the height, in this case it's 400. So I'm going to write get height. I'm going to use control space so I don't spell that wrong. Now we're going to use the add object method, something we've done before. Add object just adds an actor. We've already assigned this actor to this particular. So we already said flies i, which is whatever number we're on. We're going to add that to the world. The uh, x coordinate is going to be fly x, and the y coordinate is going to be fly y. So now we, what we've done is we've added, so now we've, for each one of these flies up to the length of the flies, we're creating a new fly. We're getting a random, we're getting a random x coordinate and a random y coordinate, and adding that in a random place. So, if we watch this, and if I add this, you'll see every time I compile it, I'm going to add five flies in five random places. So, what's nice here about this? Uh, what's nice about this? If I look at this, 
Um, and the reason I used flies.length, um, I could have just said i is less than 5 because I wrote 5 up here. Nice thing is here, say I change my mind, I'm like, oh, I'd like uh, 7 flies, right? Well, real easy, it's okay because um, it now when I do it, I'll get 7 instead of 5. I can have as many or as few flies as I want just by changing this one single number, which is pretty fun. And because this is getting kind of long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop this lesson here. And then in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to make those flies move randomly.